been a changing style over time, but the goal has kind of always uh, been the same, which, which is that um, we really want to um, be teaching kids uh, to strengthen their you know, 21st century skills, those communication, the working together, the collaboration skills, so that they can be prepared for jobs that we don't even know exist. <laughs> Uh, one of the things that is important about transitioning into a STEM lab school compared to the more traditional approach is that uh, sometimes people will tackle that problem by thinking that they just need to add courses. That's a traditional way to, to just say we're going to have more science classes and more math classes. But what that doesn't really get at is the notion that, that STEM really is cross-disciplinary and that as you think about how to organize a curriculum by focusing on topics that are related to the, the math areas and science areas and, and technology and, and engineering, um, that that crosses over into other disciplines. The question that students will often ask is, you know, why do we have to do this? Well, in a project-based learning class, that answer is pretty self-evident. It's because this is what real people do, and we're going to give you that experience so that you can see what that's like. Okay. okay, guys, my name is Corey Plakos. I'm a grad student from the University of Oregon. Um, I am teaching you guys how to extract uh, DNA and probably RNA, actually, from strawberries today, which is something I do on a daily basis. And frankly, it was really important, I think, for students to, to see real scientists in front of them. Um, I mean, the impact that that, that that really has to be able to see a usually relatively young person um, that's studying these things. Um, and can, can talk with some expertise is, um, is just a level of credibility that as classroom teachers w we wouldn't have. Um, and so the, the sort of level of focus, concentration, attention, um, and, and just, you know, I, I think um, sort of the influence that those people could have went beyond just the specific lessons and, um, and really I think helped students start to be able to see themselves in those kinds of roles, um, and that's that's really irreplaceable. You look from the side, you can look from the top. Oh, oh my god! Oh, that is so cool! That is so cool! They made like a layer over it. It's just layers! Thinking about all of the really innovative companies and the culture that they create, and schools are still taught in the same type of building, in the same format that they've been taught with forever, and wondering how we're going to get to the systemic change that's really needed for us to be able to break out of that mold and create innovation within schools. And I think that this year, from an administrative standpoint, it's really had me thinking about what culture do they have in the private sector that we need to be able to learn from and harness and bring in to the public sector and especially education so that um, we can create that innovation. Why are we so afraid of allowing kids to just go and why do we always put restrictions on ourselves and why do we feel like standards and tests are limiting when all we're saying is that we should actually hit those markers while we're allowing kids to be creative and innovative? And are there other ways for us to assess? So really thinking about how we've gotten, um, how to get that innovative feeling back into schools and how we bring back the curiosity. Well, what we're talking about today is just how the light goes in and what happens here to get into the retina? Because we're going to need cameras. As it gets darker, your eyes can expand to try and let as much light as possible. But then in the sunlight, it's going to get really, really small because there's too much light coming in. Yeah? What about people who are colorblind? Oh, that's a great question. The kids are so excited about what they're learning. In fact, today, um, when somebody asks them a question, they're already starting to design their own field trips and where they want to research next year. And so, um, for me, that's been my biggest learning this year, was just seeing kids feeling okay to be curious. It's, it's very, uh, it's centered learning. It's like, they're very specific. They teach you what you want to know. I think it's helping us a lot. Things 
we probably would have, wouldn't have learned if we didn't have it. Everybody should have that hands-on experience and I mean even if it doesn't make it that far I feel that lots of schools and yeah most of schools should have it. In education we like to think about uh, transformations and transformations take incremental steps. I, I think I've seen that just witnessed that in this one year of this project um, where we started with a teacher workshop in August and English and the math and the science teachers all came to the U of O to learn about the kind of science that we're doing here, to build relationships with scientists and, and graduate students here. And it was a growth experience for the, the graduate students as well. They learned how to become better science communicators. The teachers are experts at what they do. They, um, they really know how to work with students. They know how to manage a classroom. They know how to make things um, understandable for students. And so there's a really great partnership. All across the country, I go to conferences and talk to my peers, there's a real recognition in the, of the need to connect the STEM fields to what's taking place in the real world. And, and how to do that is really the question, and, and we think we have a nice model for that. The avid trip to the Yuba was loved by all the students getting to go into the actual labs of real scientists, real mathematicians. The kids really loved it and I'd love to see more of that type of a, maybe take a class down and actually do an experiment with the scientists in the lab would be really fun. And they were like really impressed by um, the technology they saw and how the microscope with the spider and evidently somebody blew up, blew up the picture of the spider and was able to cut the hairs off the spider's legs. I think I've heard that story from probably 10 kids. It was like they couldn't believe that uh, there was technology to do that kind of thing. kids love sharing their learning and I think um, the two different times our state has come it gives kids really an authentic audience like there's a reason why I'm learning this and I want to show it to you they want to tell their stories I think that STEM education is just great education that we could put any acronym on we want it but it's just understanding that kids of today learn differently they don't need a bunch of facts they need a bunch of process. They need how to, they can get information wherever they want to get it. They need to know how to process information and make something new from it. To know that we're not starting early enough and, and one of those things that, that we'd like to do, you know, two years down the line is really to start to work with our feeder elementary schools on, hey, this is, 
this is where we're going, this is where they start here, this is where they go to in our high school, and now we need you to, to, to also um, um, st start this process. Uh, our kids are, are really going to um, have their opportunities to engage in, in these fields because it's, it's not, they're, they're not just working against students in Oregon or students in the United States, they're, they're working against this, this global competition now.